For the next four videos, I'm going to go through what I call the four food groups for our virtual machines. Our virtual machines need certain things in their diet. They need to eat certain resources in order to be healthy and happy. And, and the first resource that we're going to talk about, the first food group, is CPU. And the reason I like to equate these to food groups is because if the virtual machine is lacking any of these, if any of these are performing poorly, then the VM is going to perform poorly. Right? You can have all the CPU and memory and, and storage bandwidth in the world. If your network is slow, you've got a slow VM. Right? So all of these four food groups are equally important. But we'll start with CPU virtualization. So how does my virtual machine get access to the CPU resources of the physical host. So here's my host, and I've got two CPU sockets. Right? And for those of you who aren't really too familiar with the CPU architecture, when you install a physical CPU, or like we call them in the virtualization world, a PCPU, install a physical CPU in a system, that's a CPU socket. Now within that socket, you may have more than four processor cores or less than four processor cores. In this case, I just chose quad core CPUs. Right, so I've got a physical host with two physical CPUs installed and each physical CPU has four processor cores. And so now when I start creating my virtual machines, I am going to allocate my virtual machines a certain number of virtual CPUs. So here we see a VM that has been allocated to virtual CPUs. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that this virtual machine has access to two physical processor cores. By creating a VM with two virtual CPUs, I'm basically saying you are allowed to leverage two physical processor cores. I'm not making any guarantees to this VM. I'm not saying you're the only one who's going to have access to those cores. I'm not saying you can have full access to those cores at all times. What I'm saying when I create a VM with two virtual CPUs is you have the ability to try to use two CPU cores. They might be busy, they might not. And I might create other VMs that are also leveraging those same processor cores. Right, so here's a VM with four vCPUs or four virtual CPUs. And this VM just happens to be accessing the same two processor cores that my first VM was. So they are now sharing those physical processor cores. So it's important to properly size my virtual machines and properly size my physical host. If I have too many VMs sharing the same set of processor cores, those VMs are gonna perform poorly. If I have virtual machines that have really CPU intensive tasks to carry out, I may want to put them on a dedicated set of processors. So you really need to think about the types of workloads that your virtual machines are going to be performing and how efficiently can they really share CPU processes with other virtual machines. Now, in most cases, you can get a pretty good consolidation ratio here. You can have many VMs sharing the same processors, but it really depends on the workload of those virtual machines and how powerful those processors are. The other concept that is very important here that I want to take a moment to talk about is right sizing your virtual machines. So if I have a virtual machine like this one in purple here, I've created it with four virtual CPUs, right? Maybe this VM used to be a physical server that I've converted to a virtual machine. And maybe that physical server also had four processors, right? Maybe it was a physical server with a quad core CPU. And so I think to myself, okay, 
I've got this physical server with a quad core CPU. Let me create a virtual machine with four virtual CPUs so that it has the same resources that it used to. And in some cases that approach is fine. In some cases it's not. Let's assume that this virtual machine is on average utilizing somewhere around 25% of its CPU. 25% of its CPU. Well, then it doesn't really need four virtual CPUs, does it? I could take away two of those virtual CPUs and this VM would be working just fine. Right? It would be closer to 50% CPU utilization, but there's nothing wrong with that. And the beauty of properly sizing and bringing this thing down to two virtual CPUs is guess what it's not going to be fighting with my first vm for access to these processor cores anymore right they're all going to play a little bit more nicely together and this vm would be working just fine right it would be closer to 50 percent cpu utilization but there's nothing wrong with that and the beauty of properly sizing and bringing this thing down to two virtual cpus is guess what it's not going to be fighting with my first vm for access to these processor cores anymore right they're all going to play a little bit more nicely together so we want to think about that concept as well when we're creating our virtual machines we want to right size those vms and give them the correct cpu account if a vm means give it four virtual cpus but if it only needs two, you should only give it two. Right? We wanna to strive to always right size our virtual machines, especially when it comes to CPU resources.